good day to you, our gorgeous viewers, and thank you for joining us today on the Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. Women on the Watch is aimed at exposing time-tested principles for your personal and relationship development. My name is Wanola Adetayo, and our topic for today is confronting your barriers. And it is based on the case study of the daughters of Zelophehad. Our scripture is taken from Numbers chapter 27, verses 6 and 7. Numbers 27, verses 6 and 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them an, a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. How did these five sisters confront their boundaries? We will start today by listening to their story. Please listen as we recount the story. Today's episode is titled Confronting Your Barriers. And it is based on the story of the daughters of Zelophehad. It is according to the scriptures as written in Numbers chapter 27 verses 1 to 11, Numbers chapter 36 verses 10 to 11, and Joshua chapter 17 verses 3 to 6. Zelophehad came from a goodly heritage because he was the grandson of Manasseh, the eldest son of Joseph, who was one of the twelve sons of Israel who became a prime minister in Egypt. Unlike his great progenitors, Zelophehad was blessed with five daughters, but he had no male child. Unfortunately for Zelophehad, he lived and died in a patriarchal society where females were not reckoned with as such. The ignominious treatment of females at that time was so bad that females were not counted during population censors and they were also denied of their right to inherit of their father's possessions. Indeed, only sons had such privilege at the time. After the death of their father, the daughters of Zelophehad were therefore denied by law to inherit their father's estate. Unlike the females of that time, these five daughters of Zelophehad chose to be intelligent and assertive by confronting this unjust law that denied women the right to inherit property in the absence of a male heir. The daughters of Zelophehad by name Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirza chose to confront this barrier to their inheritance by taking this matter publicly before Moses and the Israeli community leaders. The five daughters argued first that their father's name and lineage should not be cut off from his clan just because he had no son, and second, that in order to avoid this potential injustice to their father's name and property, they, as daughters, should be permitted to inherit his land portion. Because these ladies challenged and confronted this barrier to their inheritance, Moses decided to inquire from God. And thankfully, God confirmed to Moses that it was the right of the Zelophehad daughters to inherit their father's estate. Furthermore, by confronting their barrier, the daughters of Zelophehad became catalysts for the ushering in of a new order which was instituted in Israel. Once this new order was put in place, the male relatives challenged this new order by pointing out to Moses that once the daughters married outside of their clan, the property would move out of their lineage. Appropriate amendments were made to the new inheritance law, and the, new, the five daughters of Zelophehad 
did get married within their clan and they also inherited their father's estate. Through this heroic act of the daughters of Zelophehad, generations of men and women became beneficiaries of the many benefits of this new order. This new order made adequate provisions for every father to pass down inheritance to their daughters or the extended family members in the absence of a male heir. These brave acts of the Zelophehad daughters also made them the world's first fighters for women's rights. Many females today, like the daughters of Zelophehad, are facing various barriers to what should ordinarily be a fundamental human right, especially in Africa and in other patriarchal societies. One of the ways to break these barriers is to continue to challenge them until they are all completely broken down. If you are therefore currently facing any barrier to your next level, we urge you to stay tuned as we learn how to intelligently and assertively confront our barriers from the daughters of Zelophehad in today's episode, which is titled Confronting Your Barriers. Wow, what a wonderful feat that these five daughters of Zelophi had accomplished in their time. By confronting their barriers, they gained access to what was rightfully theirs. And much more importantly, they paved way for a new order, which not only changed their own lot, but it changed the lot of every man who did not have a male here or who didn't have ears at all. Now, these ladies, through this courageous act, they made their own life better and they made lives of generations coming behind them to be a lot better so that these people will never be cheated of their own inheritance simply because they had no, fem no male siblings. Today, we will interrogate the subject of confronting your barriers in three parts. We will answer three questions. First, what are barriers? Secondly, we will look at the roadblocks to confronting our barriers. In other words, what makes us not to confront our barriers? And thirdly, we will look at the steps to confronting our barriers. Now we will take each of these questions one at a time. The first question is, what are barriers? Barriers are generally known as structures that impede free movement. If you have observed either on an expressway or on the road, you see where the barriers are there, the intention is either to slow down the traffic or to cause the traffic to move slowly. So that's a barrier. A barrier is also anything that makes progress difficult or delays progress. Now, sometimes these barriers may be physical, some are mental, some are institutional, Indeed, some are regulatory, others are cultural, and in fact, some are ideological. Now, a barrier is anything, whether real or imagined, that separates you from your goals, your dreams, or your aspirations, or anything that makes access to your dreams and your vision difficult. You can consider this a barrier. Finally, barriers refer to everything that impedes the development or advancement of individuals, of societies, of organizations, and even nations at large. Now, having sorted out the definition of what constitutes a barrier, we want to look at roadblocks. Why is it that generally people do not confront their barriers? What are the roadblocks? Now, the roadblock number one is fear. People are generally afraid of rejection. And so because they feel that if they confront an issue, people are going to reject them. So because of the fear of rejection, they do not confront the issue. Sometimes it's simply a fear of failure. When they look sometimes at, oh my God, this barrier is so huge. Do I have what it takes? So they think, you know what? I don't think I'm going to succeed. So they don't try it. And sometimes for fear of the consequence of confronting their barriers. So, and, and the Bible en 
tells us clearly in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18b, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18b, tells us fear has torment. So he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So that's one of the, the reasons. Uh, however, we are encouraged in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, 1 Timothy 1, verse 7, it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What is the second roadblock to confronting our barriers? Is lack of faith, lack of faith. Many people lack faith in the ability of God to assist them to confront the barriers. Many lack self-esteem, many lack self-confidence. Whereas the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So one of the reasons why people do not confront their barriers is absence of faith. The third and the final reason, of course there are several, there's a plethora of reasons, but we want to stick to just three. The third one is inadequate desire. Like I tell a lot of people, your evidence of desire is in your pursuit. So when the desire for change is not strong enough, you will discover that it impedes or it represents a roadblock to your ability to confront the barriers that disturb you. And then because of that absence of the, the adequate desire, people become comfortable with discomfort. There were several daughters in, in the time of the daughters of Zelophehad who never questioned or queried that law. They just became comfortable with the discomfort of not being able to have access to the inheritance of their father. Now, having learned one, what is a barrier? Secondly, we have looked at the roadblocks to confronting our barriers. Finally, now we want to look at what are the steps that we can learn from daughters of Zelophehad on how to confront our barriers. And they have been summarized under the acronym CONFRONT. C-O-N-F-R-O-N-T. The first C is to cultivate a team. It's critical. The second is to organize your thoughts. The third is to notify the authorities because most of the time these roadblocks or these barriers are created by authorities. So you need to notify them. F, face the authorities, because you gotta go stand with them and have a conversation. R, resist intimidation. And finally, uh, O, offer your argument. Sorry, we still have two more. Seven, negotiate favorable terms. And finally, take your rightful place, confront. Now we try to take each of these eight steps one at a time. Step one, cultivate a small team. Now, this small team has to be made up of those who are affected or those who are interested or those who are concerned about the barrier. So if we look at the daughters of Zelophehad, there were five affected sisters. They got themselves together, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, Tirza. They gathered themselves together. To, to, to talk about this matter. Ecclesiastes chapter four and verse nine encourages us, Ecclesiastes four verse nine, two are better than one because they have a better reward for their labor. Now, a broom will sweep faster than one single uh, 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 element of the broom trying to sweep uh, the room. And of course, Michael Jordan, he tells us, he says, if you run into a wall, Michael Jordan, and we know how, how you know, strong and powerful uh, a sportsman he is. He says, if you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it up. Go through it or walk around it. Now, getting a team together to figure out ways and approaches to confront the barrier is the first place to start the process of confronting your barrier. Now this takes us to step two. The second step in confronting your barrier is to organize your thoughts. If you take a look at the daughters of Zelophehad, what did they do? They asked themselves, you know, what are the possible costs of living with this barrier? 
So that's the first thing you need to do. And they realize that the cost is that they will lose their inheritance. They will lose the Zelophehad name. They will lose the legacy. Strangers will take over the hard-earned, you know, fortune of their fathers. The second question you need to ask, what might be the possible gains from changing the status quo? So they said to themselves, you know what? We will gain access to our inheritance. So the five daughters of Zelophead, they told themselves, you know, the name of our father will be immortalized. We will get a hold of the resources that belong to our family. And then other families, if we're able to succeed in confronting this barrier, there will be many more to gain from this situation. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 14, verse 28, Luke 14, 28, for which of you intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Now, what this is saying is you need to sit together with a team and build your case before you go and confront the barrier. Now, the third step, notify authorities. You need to seek an appointment with the authorities that have the power to take or remove the barrier. And that's what these this, this girls did. So you need to, to, to know who are the people that have influence in removing or breaking down the barrier. The Bible encourages us in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6. Proverbs 24, verse 6. For by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. This takes us to step number four, face the authorities. There is no point gathering a team together, thinking through the process, notifying the authorities until you come and stand face to face with them. So you need to go before the influencers, before the leaders, and before the authority figures who have the wherewithal to remove the barriers to your goals. The daughters of Zelophehad, they went before Moses, they went before the priest, and they went before the princes in Numbers chapter 27, verse 2. They did that. Now, Micah chapter 4, verse 3 encourages us. It says, Arise and thresh, O daughters of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate thee again unto the Lord. You know, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. You see, even Esther chapter 8 verse 4b, Esther 8 verse 4b, Esther arose and stood before the king. So to confront your barriers, you need to prepare your case, but having prepared your case, you have to go before the authorities and present your case, albeit prayerfully. If you look at the case of Esther, she was very prayerful, but then she still had to go before the authorities. Now we go to step number five. Step number five, resist intimidation. It is natural that when you want to confront a barrier, you are probably going to be dealing with people of higher level, people of higher status. But these five daughters of Zelophehad, they were young ladies, but they resisted the feeling of intimidation by reason of their age. They resisted the feeling of intimidation by reason of the status of the big people that they were going to go and face, okay? So Esther also had to prayerfully resist the intimidation of going before King Ahasuerus because she had, the risk was there that her head might be cut off if the king was not pleased with her presence, but she had to resist the intimidation. Now the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter three and verse 22, Deuteronomy 3 verse 22 says, Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. So you got to face the authorities. Now we go to step number six. Offer your argument in a structured manner. You have to offer your argument. The structure is particularly important. Why? Because most of the time the people that you are going to face are reasoning, their own reasoning faculty is on, so you don't want to start by being emotional. So what are you going to do? The structure is you start with the facts. That's what the daughters of Zelophiha did. Facts tend to appeal to the reasoning faculty of the authorities. So the daughters of Zelophiha, they said, 
You know, our father was not rebellious. His only crime was that he didn't have a male child. Now, that obviously will appeal to their thinking faculty. And then the second step is to appeal to the emotions, okay? So the next thing is to seek empathy. So the daughters of Zelophiah, they said, should our father's name be wiped out simply because he had no son, which was not due to his own fault, okay? So Isaiah 41 verse 22 says, produce your cause, saith the Lord, bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. So when you face the authorities, you must have your argument in a structured manner. You start with what appeals to the reasoning faculty, the facts, and then you follow it with empathy and go for the emotion. And then this takes us to step number seven, the second to the last step, negotiate favorable terms. That's what Esther did. That's what Zelophi had daughters did. Now, they negotiated terms that will be favorable to the objective of breaking down the barriers. You must not forget your focus. When you go there, you can't forget your goal. Your terms must be such that deliver to you the goal of breaking down the barriers. So Moses took their matter to God, and thankfully, God approved Zelophi had daughter's argument. Therefore, the barriers to their inheritance was removed. Psalms 21 verse 2. Psalms 21 verse 2 tells us, Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholding the request of his lips. My prayer for you, those of you who decide to embark on this journey, is that nothing will be withheld from you. And now this takes us to the last step. Step eight, take your rightful place. That's the beauty. When you opt to get up and confront your barrier, what happens is that you take your rightful place in history. You take your rightful place of dignity. You take your rightful place of regard. The daughters of Zelophehad, they got their entitled inheritance contrary to the norms of their day. They started a new and unprecedented order, which they, by virtue of what they did, you know, are, are made them to start. So now, no more victims in the future. So they paved a new order. First John chapter 2, verse 8. First John chapter 2, verse 8 tells us, it says, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. When you confront, there is no doubt about it that the dark barrier gives way to the light of a new order. And Henry Ford, the one who created the, the Ford series, he says, and I quote, Henry Ford says, and I quote, he says, one of the greatest discoveries a man makes one of his greatest surprises is to find he can do what he was afraid he couldn't do. The daughters of Zelophehad, they truly surprised people of their day as they did what many would have been terrified to do. As you rise up today to apply the step-by-step -step pattern of Zelophehad daughters, I am convinced that you will be one of the greatest people to be surprised by what you will accomplish, even what you have been so afraid to dream of. So as we conclude today's episode of Women on the Watch, I ask you, what barriers are delaying your next level of accomplishment? What roadblocks are impeding your access to your dreams and your visions? The reality is that you cannot change what you refuse to confront. The number one barrier to confronting his mental block. Francis Bacon, he says, and I quote, who questions much shall learn much and shall retain much. I believe with the eight-step pattern of Zelophi, her daughters, you can turn your mental blocks to building blocks today. Confront your barriers today. Cultivate a team. Organize your thoughts. Notify the authorities. Resist intimidation, offer your argument, negotiate favorable terms, and take your rightful place in history as you watch your barriers crumble before you. Till I come your way next week, this is Wanuala Detayo, the shaper, wishing you good success on your journey 
to confronting the barriers to your next level. Please send your answers to the reflection questions. We would really love to hear from you.